well, to continue uh, from our previous uh, segment, I want to look in a little more detail at the uh, magnetic force on a moving uh, point charge. We'll assume we've got a point charge here. And um, there's not a lot more to be said about this other than to, uh, to say that a, a large body of experiments uh, uh, and lots of really pretty difficult measurements, actually, uh, uh, that occurred in the late 1890s, particularly with beams of, uh, of electrons and, uh, and positive charges as well uh, that were uh, moving uh, uh, charges uh, uh, that people developed this magnetic force law. The force here, F is the force on the point charge Q that's moving with the velocity V in an external magnetic field. And... Uh, the cross here is the, the vector cross product, which you've seen before, particularly with respect to torques and things. Uh, and uh, the, the way that I think about this is the following. Okay? Uh, let's consider a positive charge that's in space someplace and is moving with a velocity v in this direction. And also, there's an external magnetic field, probably caused by a, a bar magnet or something, uh, that has a magnetic field in this direction here. Okay, so I've got the force and the, the vector and the, and the magnetic field. And I know the charge. I didn't put the charge here. But let's assume it's positive uh, charge for right now. And in that case, uh, one determines the uh, direction of the force. And probably the best way to describe it is you, you uh, any two vectors, so long as they're not uh, collinear or anticollinear, then uh, they will uh, define a plane. And so this plane that I've drawn here in space, I'm trying to represent the plane that V and B both lie in. So, and I'd probably have to rotate things around, but V and B both lie in this plane, and I'd, I'd designate that the plane of V vector and B vector. And then they will uh, have an angle between them. The smallest angle from V to B is uh, defined to be theta. That's in the uh, plane that they're formed. And uh, then the magnitude of the force is the magnitude of the charge times the magnitude of the velocity times the magnitude of the magnetic field times the sine of that angle. And that gives you how strong the force is. But remember, forces are vectors, <laughs> and uh, we have to give the, the direction. And the direction is given by the right-hand rule. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, V cross B is uh, going to give a direction. It will always be perpendicular to the plane of V and B. Uh, and uh, uh, V cross B will be in this direction. If it's positive charge, I'll have a positive in that direction. If it's negative, it's still perpendicular to the plane. It's just going to go uh, uh, in the opposite direction to what I have here. And again, uh, it sounds pretty complicated, and, and in fact it is. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, that uh, uh, is uh, uh, encapsulates a, a large body of experiments. And uh, at this point, you just have to say that's the way nature behaves, uh, that the magnetic fields produce those kinds of forces. Uh, sometimes we'll get a little bit sloppy. These are really magnitudes. So sometimes I'll write this as uh, F, Q, V, B, sine theta, this expression up here. But then when you do that, you just have to know that I'm taking the, the magnitude of all of those. So one way to find the uh, magnetic force on a moving point charge is uh, that if uh, uh, if um, uh, if uh, is to calculate its magnitude and then use the uh, the right hand rule to get its direction. Uh, notice I was going to say uh, if the charge is not moving, if it's stationary, then v vanishes and the magnitude vanishes. V vector vanishes, and so there's no magnetic force. So magnetic forces are kind of strange in that they, uh, on charges, uh, charge must be moving. Uh, 
it's not moving, if velocity is zero, then there's no magnitude. And the, uh, the only vector that has a magnitude zero is the zero vector, so there's no force. Uh, it can also vanish if the angle between V and D is uh, 180 degrees because this, uh, or zero. So zero or 180 degrees. If it's zero, then V and D point in exactly the same direction. And there's no force in that case, even though the charge may be moving. Or if it's a sign of the angle of theta, if theta is 180 degrees, then V is moving in the opposite direction to D. And again, that uh, it vanishes by virtue of the sine function. So uh, if uh, V and B are parallel, B vector and D vector are parallel. Or if V vector and D vector are anti-parallel, uh, then there is no magnetic force on the charge. Sometimes it's easier to uh, look at the uh, things uh, in slightly different perspective. If I get on uh, top of this, uh, uh, this plane here and look down into it, if it's a positive charge, <laughs> well, uh, uh, the, uh, this is the plane of V and B that I've drawn. Here's D. So that's, uh, here's D. This is this angle here, B. And uh, the uh, V cross B comes right out at me if it's a positive charge. And so this circle with a dot in it will be coming out of the page uh, uh, or out of the board if you're doing it on the board at you as a way to represent the direction of the force. On the other hand, if it's a negative charge, V cross B still will point out of the page, but the, the minus sign up here this becomes negative, and so B cross B is still out of the page, but the minus will flip it. And so if it's a negative charge, the magnetic uh, uh, force on it is going into the page, and we use this symbol uh, circle with a cross uh, uh, in it to get, indicate that it's going uh, away from us. In both cases, the magnitude of the force is the same, so, but the direction is different, depending on whether the charge is positive or negative. Uh, well, I'll uh, look at the uh, standard units of the magnetic field, and we could get it from the, the force law, yeah, which I'll just take here in magnitude form. The units have to agree uh, uh, regardless. And uh, so the magnitude of force is the magnitude of, or I'm sorry, the units of force up here, and the units of charge and the units of velocity, and the units of D, and the units of sine theta. So I just look at the units on both sides. And uh, uh, I know that force in SI units is a newton. Uh, charge is in coulombs. Velocity is in meters per second. Uh, a sine is just dimensionless, so it doesn't have any units. And so I can uh, deduce the units of the magnetic field in our uh, metric uh, system that we use uh, from this relationship. Uh, Newton, uh, Coulomb, meters per second, and then just solve this for B. So to do that, I have to multiply through by the seconds and divide through by the Coulomb meters. And so the uh, unit of magnetic field is this expression in terms of Newton, seconds, Coulombs, and meters. Uh, that is given a name after uh, Nikola uh, Tesla. And so that is uh, a, a Tesla. Uh, one Tesla is one Newton second per Coulomb meter. And Tesla is abbreviated capital T. You can rearrange that and get some other units that you will sometimes see or other ways of looking at it. I won't use these much in this class, but uh, uh, if any, I'll, I'll use Teslas. Uh, but the, the Weber here may uh, come up occasionally. Uh, a Tesla is one Newton, uh, and I divide top and bottom by seconds, and so I bring the seconds down below, and seconds below is uh, a, 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 a coulomb uh, per second, or a, is a meter per second, I should say. <laughs> And then what I do is, uh, so that's just rearranging the Tesla. Then I multiply top and bottom by meters. And the top then becomes a Newton meter, which I know is a joule. 
and then I move the second over to underneath the coulomb. A coulomb per second is an ammeter, and then I've got meter times meter or meter squared. So a joule per ampere meter squared is the same as a, a Tesla, so that's a, another form. And then uh, people uh, will uh, uh, define uh, a unit uh, called the Weber as the joule per uh, uh, per ampere. And so one Tesla then joule per ampere is just a Weber per meter squared. And if you multiply that to both sides by meter squared, you get a Weber is a Tesla times a meter squared. Uh, what it entails is, is that Weber is a unit for magnetic flux, which we'll, uh, we'll come into uh, a little later. Okay. Uh, so in any event, uh, magnetic fields uh, uh, will do in Teslas, or uh, occasionally you may see this Weber per meter squared for the unit of uh, magnetic field. Uh, Another unit uh, that uh, uh, arises uh, was actually first uh, introduced by, uh, by Gauss, uh, uh, Gauss's law, Gauss, uh, Carl Frederick Gauss. Um, and uh, uh, he uh, was in the early days of the uh, study of magnetic fields, and so they really didn't have any units. And so what he did was he took the uh, strength of the Earth's magnetic field where he was in uh, uh, northern Germany, uh, to be uh, uh, to be one, <laughs> and so he measured everything in terms of the relative strength of the Earth's magnetic field, okay? uh, and uh, that's uh, it was kind of a bad definition. It was not too bad for his time, uh, because we know that as you go further north, the Earth's magnetic field are going to get closer to the Earth's uh, magnetic uh, pole, and the the uh, magnet gets stronger. The magnetic field gets stronger toward the poles of it. And so the, uh, the Earth's magnetic field depends a great deal on where you are. It's uh, generally stronger at the North and South Pole, and it's the weakest at the, uh, at the equator, okay? uh, as sort of general uh, guideline. Uh, so that was standardized at some point, and nowadays we just define one Gauss as 10 to the minus fourth Tesla. So it's one ten thousandth of a Tesla. Uh, 10,000 Gauss is one Tesla. Uh, they use capital G for Gauss and capital T for Tesla. And uh, the magnetic field of the Earth is on the order of one Gauss. Okay? Uh, I think when we measured it uh, here uh, uh, in Edmund, uh, I, we generally get about a half a Gauss, so uh, we're, we're further south than, uh, uh, than uh, uh, Carl Frederick Gauss was when he developed it, and so we're, uh, we have a little lower uh, value. But it's typically in, in that uh, kind of a range. The, uh, uh, so you see that a fair amount, uh, particularly amongst the biologists and life scientists, they will use Gauss. Uh, it also, uh, uh, you can buy uh, uh, meters that measure the strength of a magnetic field, and very often they're called Gauss meters because they'll put out uh, the, how strong the magnetic field is in, their, uh, in a particular region or wherever you're measuring it. Uh, in terms of Gauss. Okay? So don't be surprised if you hear the term Gauss meter. 